Okay, Clay, good, good afternoon, and I'll turn it over to you. All righty, guys. Happy Wednesday to everybody, and happy signing day uh, to everybody. Uh, obviously, a busy uh, yet exciting week uh, for our team uh, and our staff. And uh, it's one of those weeks where you got to embrace and, and love the grind and, and love what uh, college football is all about. Uh, and, and 26 years of, of, of being a college football coach, this is this has been uh, maybe the most unusual, <laughs> but the most fun. Uh, I've had in a week uh, to be able to have a back-to-back -back short weeks, to be able to have uh, one opponent and then switch an opponent and game plan and prepare and and, and signing day uh, has been uh, challenging, but a lot of fun. It, it really has. Um, starting with our football team, uh, I, you know, I think they've done a tremendous job uh, in their preparation. Uh, we have an important practice uh, today. We'll treat like uh, really like a Thursday of game week. Um, making final preparations. We've really had an opportunity to catch up. Uh, I think our staff has done a wonderful job in that uh, on a short week, and we're finalizing uh, putting in the plan uh, today. Uh, and the kids have been in a great space uh, all week. I love their mental focus, and I love their preparation. And we look forward to the opportunity to compete uh, with, with Oregon in a great championship game and, and try to go 1-0 and on the week again. From uh, a signing class standpoint, uh, extremely excited about the 20 young men uh, that we signed this morning. Um, you know, um, it, it it filled, I know this gets said a lot, but it filled a lot of needs that we need for the future. Uh, this is a veteran team that will have, probably will lose some attrition uh, to the NFL uh, in graduation. Um, and to be able to, and I'll just run down the list just real fast, be able to sign two really talented quarterbacks in, in Jackson Dart and Miller Moss uh, was really exciting. Um, a great running back from Texas and Brandon Campbell. Three wideouts um, that uh, we're really excited about in Kyron Ware Hudson, Michael Jackson, and Joseph Manjack. Um, uh, two, two uh, what we call our Y bodies that can flex out or attach to the offensive line, push the field vertically at our Y position uh, in Michael Trigg and, and Lake McCree, bolstered our offensive line uh, with uh, Mason Murphy and Max Gibbs and, and Ty Buchanan, uh, continued to build on our defensive line, two huge people in, in, in Jay Toya and, and Ishmael uh, Softshirt. Uh, as well as Colin Mobley uh, out of uh, out of Maryland uh, as as an edge player, um, really uh, brought in I think a, a, a captain intangibles and tremendous player at linebacker Julian Simon, and then we bolstered our our, our back end um, after you know not signing a DB last year. This was an important class for us. Uh, and to bring in the three safeties of Anthony Beavers, Kalen Bullock, and, and Zamarian Gordon, as well as coverage players like Prophet Brown and Jalen Smith, um, really uh, has helped us in the back end. Uh, very excited about this group. Um, I think ultra talented group, uh, but as, as, as much as they are talented, they are great people and great students and fit our culture. Um, 10 of these young men uh, are from the state of California. Uh, we continued our West Coast footprint, 10 from California, uh, one of the top players from the state of Utah, one of the top players from the state of Washington, and one of the top, top players in the state of Nevada. Uh, but one thing that I've learned about this brand uh, is you can take it anywhere and be successful. And uh, we were able to garner four kids in the state of Texas, which has been uh, really good to us uh, the past couple of years. One of the top players uh, at the state of Florida, a great player at the state of Louisiana, and obviously, like I said, a great player at, a, at the state of Maryland. So 20 young men were right in a great spot right now. Obviously, um, you, you know, there's some big fish that are yet out there that when you're at USC, you've got to compete for um, and, um, and compete over the next couple of days or if it goes all the way to February. Um, so uh, we're in a terrific place uh, right now for it being the first signing day uh, and got a little work to do uh, as we continue to February. So um, I hope that gave you good information on where we're at and uh, I'll take any questions that you got. Okay, again, uh, raise your hand if you have questions, keep yourselves on mute otherwise. Um, and we'll start with Ryan Young. Clay, obviously a lot of criticism last year at the recruiting ranking. What validation or 
affirmation or whatever sentiment do you feel to see it come together the way it has this class? Yeah, you, you know, last year um, in having, you know, 12 scholarships and really signing nine of the 12 being big men, you knew it wasn't going to be an excessively sexy class or maybe a high ranked class, but it was a class that that I thought would help us with championships in the future because I think big men win championships. As we go, as we went into this year, just being honest, Ryan, the most important thing, I was so excited about our team, uh, but I was very nervous that recruits weren't going to get to see our brand of football or watch these kids play together and see the excitement of what it means to be a USC Trojan and to see where this team is headed and, and what it can accomplish. Um, and so I'm so glad uh, that we got the opportunities this fall uh, to be able to play, uh, to be able to show the talent that's on this team and guys coming in, uh, being able to play with that talent and helping us on our way to uh, competing for national championships. And these kids saw that. Uh, these kids saw that uh, and, uh, and really drew to it. Um, a lot of these kids have been committed for a long time, and it speaks to their, their character and, and, and their rock solidness uh, for how they felt about our program and our culture and where it's headed. So um, I'm really happy about today. Um, you know, but more importantly than winning the day, it was really about winning championships. And these men that are coming in uh, are not only talented, but they're the right guys and, and they're the right guys to help us win championships. So it, it's a good day. We got we have some more work to do, um, uh, not only through this week, uh, but uh, through February uh, to finish off this class. Is there any personal aspect of it, though, for you and your staff just to kind of change the narrative? Say it one more time, Ryan. I lost you. Is there any personal aspect to it for you and your staff to have changed the narrative around USC recruiting? You, you, you know what I, I, I really thought happened in this time, Ryan, in, in this recruiting class? That I'm very appreciative for our staff because um, this was an unusual year. Um, you know, living in the world of technology and having to root, recruit with technology, we really felt like relationships were going to be ultra important. And I think one of the greatest gifts you can give somebody is your time. So we duct tape phones and iPads to our heads and they just went as hard as we could in building relationships and spending the time uh, with recruits and, and gaining their faith, their trust, uh, and then putting a product on the field, like I said. So, um, you know, we're, we're so glad to have a full boat this year. That always helps. Uh, but we also signed some really quality players uh, that, that can help us in the future. So uh, it, it was a, it was a very good day. Uh, and like I said, uh, hopefully uh, we'll have continued good days uh, in the near future. Hi, Antonio. Clay, I, I know the quarterback recruiting world could be some kind of delicate waters to navigate at times. And, it, and it's rare that a program signs two blue chip quarterbacks in the same class. How, how did you guys manage that? Well, it's USC. Uh, and I, I'm very appreciative to both young men because they are, um, in my time here, this is my 11th season, and, and one of the things I know about that room is the guys that walk in that room are not fearful of competition. They welcome it, um, and all they want is a, is a chance to compete. Um, in, in these two guys' case, in, in evaluating them and, and getting to know them, um, first of all, they started off having those winning intangibles that a quarterback has to have. Uh, they had the, the winners win, and they're winners. Um, obviously, they've got the, 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 the mechanical things that you look for from decision-making, timing, accuracy, uh, but they also lift their programs uh, up. And we saw that with, with both kids. You know, you saw Jackson this year and what he was able to accomplish at Corner Canyon, winning a championship, putting up the numbers that he did, uh, really coming on the scene and exploding. Uh, and, and you saw what Miller did. We didn't get to see him this year play, but you, we watched him his junior year and what he did for Bishop Alamany and how he raised that program and kind of put it on on his back. So uh, we're excited about both kids. And, and they had that intestinal fortitude uh, to believe in themselves, believe in what they can do. They saw that we had not signed a quarterback last year, that there was a two-year gap, and there was an opportunity to compete at a very young age uh, and play at a very young age. And that's all you want uh, as a quarterback is to be able to step in a room, uh, compete, and the best guy play. And that's what that's what this place has always been and always garnered is, is championship quarterback-level qu quarterbacks. And, and we're very fortunate uh, to get both Miller and Jackson. I cannot wait to work with both of them. 
And what was it like recruiting Jackson this year when you can't see a quarterback mm-hmm. throw in person and you have to watch film and all that stuff? Mm-hmm. What was that like? Yeah, you know, um, really he came on the scene uh, in the fall and having the chance to watch his tape and how he and how he progressed um, from his junior to senior year and what he was accomplishing. Um, he has every aspect that you want in a quarterback, um, you, you know, and, and it what in. And it was his consistency of play that really stood out to me. Um, you know, I've always believed quarterbacks uh, are like that great golfer, or that great pitcher. They take that swing or they or they release that pitch and they move on to the next pitch. And it for him, it wasn't it didn't matter if it was a good play or a bad play. He was able to move on and consistently play at a high level. Uh, and obviously um, what he was able to do for his team. Um, he, he put him on his back and carried him to a championship. So it was really neat to watch him and, and then to get to know him and his family. Um, it, you know, you, you can tell uh, that he's a winner uh, and a winner at heart. And so it, it was neat to get to know him this fall, expecting great things from him and looking forward to, to coaching him. We'll go to Ryan Karchi. Hey, Clay. It was about a year ago that, that Mike said that he was that you guys were going to invest more just in the recruiting operation in general you guys added a bunch of support staff uh positions and you know change the coaching staff up how much do you feel like those changes and those extra investments made a difference especially in this cycle Hmm. yeah i'm very appreciative to mike uh the university and the um, the administration for what they've done for us. You know, we identified some areas that we needed to strengthen and recruiting was one of those areas and bolster uh, both resources from from a personnel side uh, as well, uh, personnel assistance, uh, as well as recruiting assistance to the technological side uh, of video production and graphics and, and graphic art design and those things that really jump out uh, at, uh, at people. And then to acquire a company like J1S uh, and to create Boulevard Studios and what that's going to mean for name, image, image, and likeness in the future, it stands out to recruits. Uh, and and so, uh, you know, that is a huge piece of this is the work ethic our staff had uh, as combined with the resources that we were given. You get those two things, you're going you're to have production. And um, so I'm very appreciative for both what our, the work our staff put in and the resources that Mike and the administration gave us. And from a game perspective, what's Vivai's situation heading into this game? Uh, right now, uh, Ryan does not look good, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, he, he has that MCL sprain, uh, which is usually a multi-week, uh, just has not practiced this week, um, and just uh, um, uh, does not look good for the game going in. Uh, Adam Grossbard. Clay, last year there was, you know, a lot of talk about USC missing out on some of the top rated recruits in the state of California. How do you feel like you guys have changed that narrative with some of the local guys that you picked up in this class? Yeah, I, I really am proud of our West Coast footprint. Like I talked about, 10, 10 kids from California, one kid from Utah, one kid from Washington, and one kid from Nevada, and, and elite players. Um, and so, uh, proud of what we've accomplished. Um, like I said, there's some big fish that are still remaining out there. Um, and uh, so, you know, the job is not done yet. Uh, but from what we acquired today was very proud uh, of of the job our, our coaching staff did uh, in acquiring um, where you got to be great at. And that's at home uh, first. So um, definitely, um, I, I thought that uh, not only, you know, last year we did it with big men, but this year you really look at the skill positions, uh, especially at the defensive back position. It really stood out to me um, that there was this was a unbelievable year on the West Coast uh, for for defensive backs. And uh, uh, to be able to have the day like we had today uh, was uh, very advantageous for us for the future. When you hired Dante Williams last year, there was a lot of talk about his recruiting prowess, mm-hmm. like especially mm-hmm. with the DB heavy class like this. Mm-hmm. What impact did he and Craig Nassar have? Oh, I just I can't thank him enough um, because the the energy and the enthusiasm and the work ethic and the love. Uh, for recruiting was just evident from day one and the relationship builders that they are. Uh, and 
you know, the product they put on the field. Guy, kids can see. I mean, they can see all of a sudden um, how much improvement our secondaries had from last year to this year. Talanoa Funga has become a, a, a national star in front of our eyes. You look at the, the improvement um, of Chris Steele and Elijah Griffin, the years that, the years that they have, Isaiah Polamau. So not only is it the work ethic, enthusiasm, and energy they bring to recruiting, but kids are seeing, gosh, my, these guys not only recruit, they're great coaches. You know, and, and I think that's what stood out is is Dante and Craig may be known as, as great recruiters than they are, but they're even better coaches and the product on the field that they're creating is, is it was evident to kids and was really easy. And so, you know, when you saw these kids commit early uh, and then never flinched whatsoever, uh, it speaks volumes to the relationships they had with the kids, but also the belief the kids had in them. Uh, Jim Hill, I see you unmuted. Or did you have a question? Yes, I do. Coach, how are you today? Doing good, my friend. Great to see you as always. Uh, good to see you. Coach, your, your team has gone through so much this year, so much uh, pressure and things like that. You always refer to your young men as being so very much mature. How much did the regular season and all those come from behind victories, how much is that going to help you going into this championship game for the conference? Yeah, uh, I think it really started March 15th, Jim, to be honest with you. <laughs> and every day from then to, to now, to this Friday, uh, and, and every situation, every adversity that we faced, um, I, you know, I, we were talking about it the other day. I was like, guys, do you, do you remember when we were lifting outside under tents? <laughs> You know, just open for the chance to step on the field and actually play and actually be together as a team. Uh, and you, and then walking in and saying, you know what, uh, man, let's just try to go one and zero every week and see where it takes us. See if we can be a part of a national discussion. You know, see see how let's see how good we can be in, in the opportunities that we've given, and, and and maybe it'll equal a championship. And to see those kids battle through each and every step, uh, that those, those games that were close may not be won last year. You know, those kids, the kids have gotten older. They've gotten, they've hardened. Uh, they've gotten so close and bonded together um, that this is one of those years they'll never forget. I mean, they'll be 80 years old looking back at this and saying, hey, I, I was a part of a team and part of a family that that fought through every possible situation you could imagine in 2020 and put them in self in a place to, to to play for a championship and hopefully we can do our job one more time and uh, and carry a Pac-12 title home. Thanks, coach. Good luck. Thank you, Jim. Uh, we'll go to Ryan Abraham. Hey, Clay. Hey, Clay. Just want to see what do you think the biggest difference is in your recruiting war room after adding the assistant coaches you talked about, like Craig Navar and. Dante Williams, but what's the that recruiting war room? What's the biggest difference between this year and last year? Um, I, I think it's really a culmination of um, the resource, like I said, the resources that were given, uh, as well as the work ethic uh, of our of our coaching staff uh, and the relationships that we built. I mean, everybody pulled in the same direction. Uh, we had a detailed plan of where we wanted to go. We had the numbers, which was very important uh, in this time around. Uh, and we knew exactly what we wanted to accomplish and who we wanted to accomplish it with. Uh, and we were able to acquire, have some early success, as you saw in the spring and in the summer. Uh, and then by building those relationships, we held on to those relationships for the most part. Uh, and that was an important piece. Uh, and then you look up towards the end, um, you, you know, we've garnered some great additions uh, today and uh, hopefully uh, we'll continue that in the near future. But I think everybody pulling in the same same area, the work ethic that's happened uh, and the resources that have been given. I've got a great staff, uh, both from a coaching staff, a recruiting staff, an operations staff, a graphic design staff, video production staff. They're all in it. I mean, we're we're all we're all in it together. And we have this enormous text thread where it's just us, uh, you know, when we, when we, we celebrate all wins and it's hilarious to be able to well, see these guys celebrate every win and every kid and just celebrate each other. You know, it, it's, it wasn't about, Oh, this guy signed this guy, this guy signed this guy. It was just a whole building, a whole floor on this third floor of JMC that just celebrated every victory, recruiting victory together. And it was really neat to see. It was a lot of fun. Um, so um, I, I, I felt that, 
that one, you know, kind of one unit, one goal, uh, and everybody celebrating every win. And it really didn't care who got the credit. Uh, it was about our team and our and, and our university. And, and we're reaping benefits today because of it. And then do you think uh, USC and the Pac-12 aren't getting enough respect? Uh, only, you know, you guys are undefeated and only moved up two spots to number 13 in the latest college football playoff rankings. You know, Ryan, I, I've always thought, and I told the kids, I, I've always thought respect is earned. It is earned. And when we went into this, we knew we were behind the sticks. Uh, we knew that we, our goal was to be one and in every week. Um, we felt like uh, wins were important. Uh, and, and somehow, some way, uh, our chance of being recognized nationally would need to be an undefeated season uh, with the number of games that we had. Um, uh, uh, we did lose a game, uh, which was unfortunate, uh, but we have a chance to build a resume of, of six games and, and show who we are. I am biased, and you got to realize that. I'm the head coach of USC, and I, and I love these kids, and I love what they're, they're about. Um, do I feel like we're a top-10 team? Yes. It's not my job to put, say, oh, you know, uh, it, the committee's job is to pick the four best teams, and they've, and they've done a wonderful job. Our job is to go one and zero every week, and we got a chance to go one and zero this week. Not everybody's playing. Not everybody gets a chance to play in a championship game this week and be a a pac be a Pac-12 champion or a conference champion. So this is a huge week for our resume, and we'll see where it takes us. Um, but uh, obviously, uh, obviously, you gain re you gain respect by earning it, and we've got to go out there this, this week and earn more respect. And uh, that's a, that's what's kind of got a chip on our shoulder right now. So we look forward to the next opportunity. Uh, we'll jump to uh, Claudette. Hi, Clay. Uh, I was wondering, was signing Jackson Dart a bit of a relief for you guys after losing Jake Garcia earlier this month? Well, you know, we already – we had a great quarterback in Miller Moss uh, that we were able to uh, commit um, in the spring. Uh, and uh, to be able to evaluate uh, Jackson uh, and to see his talent level and to bring two great quarterbacks into that room – that we know both knew had competitive hearts uh, and didn't care who was in the room. Um, I mean, it, it takes a lot of courage, one, just to walk in the room and say, hey, you know, Keaton Slovis is there. Imagine that. And then uh, to have two quarterbacks walk in the room at the same time just speaks volumes uh, to who those, those guys are. I mean, we came into the recruiting process knowing that we had skipped a year last year, uh, that we needed to sign uh, two. Uh, and we were very, uh, I, you, what I've always said with quarterbacks, just be clear, be transparent, be honest, tell them exactly the situation, what you plan on doing, uh, and let them make the choices for themselves. And, 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 you know, those guys that, that want to be in that situation will choose it. and, and credit to both kids to say, you know what, I know how important it is to be at USC, not, not only for my football career but my academic career and my life after football, you know, that's why kids choose USC, especially at the quarterback position. And so both those kids chose good for them, you know, good for them. Both those kids are, are one to compete good for them. Um, and uh, we, we're very fortunate because we got two good young men walking into this program. We have time for two quick questions. We'll take first one from Ryan Young. Uh, just building off that with the quarterbacks, Clay, what's it say about how much you guys value Jackson Dart that she went after him aggressively, even though you had at the time mm -hmm. two four-star commits, knowing that there would probably mm -hmm. be a domino effect of some kind? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we, we after watching Jackson's film, um, you know, we, we thought that he was a special talent, uh, just, like, uh, just like Miller. Um, and, you know, to see what he was doing with his football team uh, in, in producing a championship, uh, it was it was clear that this is somebody that we wanted to recruit um, was, again, very communicative uh, to all the quarterbacks uh, that we were recruiting um, and um, credit to Jackson. Um, he said, Coach, this is a wonderful opportunity and I'm going to investigate it. I want to build a relationship. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's what he was looking for. Uh, it's it's always about finding the right fit uh, for a kid. And he found his right fit. And he's the right fit for us, you know. And so um, it, it's awesome to be able to acquire two great quarterbacks that are going to compete against each other. Uh, but uh, it, it's, it was really neat to watch that kid play uh, this year and see uh, the bright future that he has. Thank you. And we'll finish with uh, Ryan Karchi. 
Clay, I know you said earlier this week that that you talked to Marquis Steph about potentially having an opportunity coming up on Friday. Uh, mm-hmm. From what you've seen from him, how would you describe his frame of mind just throughout this season? And uh, where has he maybe impressed you? Or what, what would you like to see from him uh, stepping up into this opportunity? Yeah, you, you know, I look for, I, I think Marquise is on the verge of exploding, to be honest with you. You know, I, I, after coming off, it, it has not been the easiest of roads, roads in dealing with an injury, especially the one he had at running back. And, and then, you, you know, to go through some dings uh, early in this season. Um, but what I appreciate about Marquise is when he's called upon, he does his job. And he was called on in a critical moment last week, if you remember, on a third and short uh, where we needed a, a, a powerful back to make a play uh, when, when Vivai wasn't feeling all that great. And to walk in there and to do his job uh, and, and get that first down for us spoke volumes to the kind of kid he is and the type of competitor he is. Um, now, all of a sudden, you look and, and Vivai is probably not playing in this game. Now your role increases and, and gets even bigger, you know. So I can't wait to watch him play. I know he's he's looking forward to it. I mean, he has been – his practice yesterday might have been the best practice of the year for him, uh, the way he was racing up and down. The he took every ball – and I'm, I'm talking about ran out of the back of the end zone uh, going 100 miles an hour. Uh, so it, it's neat to see his enthusiasm and how excited he is for this week. Uh, and I look forward to watching him play. Uh, I, I really do. Um, I, I, I think he's right on the verge of doing something special, and we need him to. And so uh, I look forward to it. Okay. Uh, Clay, thanks for joining us. Media, thank you for joining us. Let me give you just an update on uh, Sunday. It's bowl selection day. Uh, depending on what bowl we go to, the, each bowl has its own presser. Uh, I'll get that information to you as soon as we know uh, what, what it is. And then our uh, schedule for the following uh, weeks, uh, I'll get that information to you as far as media availability and all that. So um, with that, uh, enjoy the rest of your day. We hope to see you at uh, the Coliseum on Friday. And uh, Clay, again, thanks for joining. Stay safe, guys. Take care.